Okay, so welcome to this, um, well, October edition of the Global Diabetes Journal Club. And I'm very happy to have uh, Jay Chang from uh, the Department of Public Health at Aarhus University in Denmark with us today. And uh, yeah, she'll be talking about intergenerational transmission of obesity, which I find is a very interesting topic. And, uh, and I also have the pleasure of actually sharing office space with Jay when I'm at the department uh, in, in Aarhus. So, uh, so I know I've heard quite a lot about this project. So I'm, I'm, um, so I'm even more excited kind of about having it here because I think it's really, really interesting. And I know you've been working a lot on it. So yeah, so over to you, Jay, and you can take it from here. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. And uh, I'm very honored to be here to talk about the systematic review about BMI between parents and the adult offspring. Um, I have been working on it for a long time since I started the PhD. So this is the outline of the presentation, but please feel free to interrupt if there are any questions. I will start from the objective and um, to help ilu illustrate the rationale behind the study, I created the theoretical framework. Uh, since we already kind of know there's family resemblance of BMI, um, so why do we still conduct the study? Well, evidence shows that BMI is influenced by the genetic factors and the environmental factors, and the intergenerational transmission of BMI is also operated through the two uh, channels. Uh, environmental factors could be like lifestyle uh, factors, including smoking, drinking, and also shared family environment, like social economic positions and uh, um, and also cooking habits, et cetera, things like that. But above the two major factors, it is, it is also suggested that um, mothers with greater BMI before or during pregnancy might increase the risk of uh, obesity for in the children uh, according to the intrauterine effect. Uh, it has already been supported by some animal studies, but it's hard to test it in human observational studies due to the compound factors. Um, so far, but uh, of course there are ways to, to provide evidence like Mendelian randomization, which I wouldn't talk a lot here, but there's also an active control study uh, which to use the paternal effect as a control and uh, compare the mother offspring association with the father offspring association. So if there's intrauterine effect, the association between the mother offspring should be much larger than the father offspring association. Um, besides that, previous studies might only uh, study the, the offspring during the childhood relatively few studies have followed the children until the adulthood. So in this systematic review, first of all, we would like to synthesize all the published studies on intergenerational effect uh, of BMI, and also to compare the difference between maternal and the paternal line. And uh, also there's growing interest to assess sex-specific parent and offspring associations. Uh, this is the workflow of the meta-analysis. And I will talk about the, item, uh, the items in following slides. So we started by searching the articles using predefined keywords. Um, after screening, we have 50 studies included. There are 30 cohort studies and 20 cross-sectional studies. The sample size varied ranging from 32 to more than 36,000. And the participants from more than 15 countries. They see the geographic distribution of the studies mostly are from Europe and the US. Um, and the when next step is data extraction and it quickly gets complicated because the offspring BMI could be reported as continuous or categorical. For continuous outcomes, different models were also used to summarize 
uh, like some study use reported correlation coefficient and uh, some studies use regression models and the reported regression coefficient. And among them, some studies conducted sex specific uh, association and uh, some study only reported at the parent level and for regression, there's also standardized and unstandardized coefficient. And for odds ratio, uh, there are also different categories for both the parents and the offspring. So, so we spend a lot of time talking about how to synthesize all the data. And in terms of the relationship, uh, we started from the sex specific association, which means uh, studies reporting separately for mother and daughter, mother and son, father and daughter, father and son. So we first reported the results for this level one studies. Then we used the fixed effect models to um, merge the level one study to level two. For example, if one study reported both mother daughter and mother son, we will use the fixed effect models to get the mother offspring association. Same thing for the father of offspring association. And uh, we use the same approach to collect data from level two to level three to get a final parent offspring association. And uh, in terms of the effect measurement, as I mentioned earlier, there are different um, reported measurement like a correlation, regression coefficient and odds ratio. Uh, we also spend time talking whether we should just convert it them into one single measurement. Um, but uh, I think at the last we decided to report it separately. So for correlation coefficient, uh, we put the cor correlation at different levels as it showed earlier. And for regression uh, coefficient, we first sum summarized the unstandardized mean difference separated for adjusted models and unadjusted models. Then we converted a standardized mean difference to standardized mean difference and merge them together. So to try to include as many studies as possible. And then for odds ratio, we also uh, categorize, we also use different par uh, parental and offspring categories to predict. And this is just to show how the results were uh, organized in the manuscript. As you can imagine, there will be a lot of a forest plot and the tables. Um, if we look at the correlation coefficient at the sex specific level, on the left side, it is the forest plot. Um, and on the right side is a figure I summarized to easily to read. Uh, so for the correlation between mother and daughter is 0 0.25 and between mother and son is 0 0.24, uh, which seems very close. And uh, the correlation between father and daughter is 0 0.19 and uh, 0 0.2 between the father and the son. Father and the, son. Uh, the next one is the forward plot at the parent level. And the correlation between mother and offspring is 0 0.25, and between father and offspring is 0 0.21. Uh, we did a similar things for the unstandardized mean difference. And uh, basically, we observe uh, similar to correlation, both the mothers and the fathers will influence the uh, offspring at, at both genders. But if we look at the unstandardized mean difference uh, for the adjusted models and adjusted models, it's quite interesting. Uh, after adjustment, the association became attenuated, so which indicated the confounders, except the father son. But I think maybe due to very few studies reporting father and son relationship. And this is the for the standardized mean difference result. The pattern is quite similar to that of the unstandardized mean difference. And this is the forest plot for both unstandardized and standardized mean difference. Uh, for 
So basically for one unit increase of the mother BMI, uh, the offspring BMI will, in, will increase 0 0.33. And uh, for father BMI increase, for one unit for father's BMI, um, it will increase 0 0.3. But uh, if you recall the objective of the study, we would like to compare the maternal line to paternal line. So we couldn't just use eyeball to, to see whether there's difference. So we calculated the difference of a mean difference for all the effect sites. For example, um, this study reporting both the mother offspring association and the father offspring association. And then we calculated the difference and merge the difference to get a plot result. So the summarized difference is 0 0.01, which is very tiny, suggesting there might not be difference between uh, mothers and the fathers. And this is the result for the uh, standardized mean difference. Again, the confidence interval includes zero. And this is the result for correlation. And uh, uh, basically all the three factor size demonstrate there's no uh, strong evidence to indicate that difference between maternal line and the paternal line. Um, then we move to the plot result of odds ratio. There are a lot of a forest plot behind this. So I just uh, summarized the results in the table. Um, for example, uh, for the offspring who were born with parents who were overweight, the odds ratio of overweight would be 0 0.2, and the odds ratio of obese would be 0 0.5. And uh, uh, compared to those born to normal weight parents, and uh, the figure uh, kind of shows there's there might be dose response relationship, but. Uh, we don't have enough data to quit. But uh, uh, even for the odds ratio, it also uh, provide evidence there's positive association between the parental and the offspring BMI association. Um, then we conducted a bunch of sub-analysis, subgroup analysis, which I will select some examples here. Um, if you recall the theoretical framework uh, to test the hypothesis the maternal BMI should be measured before pregnancy. So we, but not all the studies have that kind of information. So we've separated the uh, studies by uh, the measurement time of the mother's BMI. So the uh, summarized, standardized mean difference before pregnancy is 0 0.24 and 0 0.23 after pregnancy. But the confidence interval, just a lot of overlap. Um, we also conducted the subgroup by the study design. Uh, for cohort study, the port stand, uh, standardized mean difference is 0 0.23. And uh, for cross-sectional, it's 0 0.25. Uh, besides that, uh, as I mentioned, different stati statistical methods were employed to analyze the association. Uh, but, uh, and most studies adjusted for important confounders, including social economic factors, uh, smoking, drinking, and parental age. And the majority of the studies found positive association between uh, parents and their adult offspring but the four studies reported non-association. Uh, we then conducted the quality assessment using adapted Newcastle Ottawa scale for cohort studies. There are seven criteria in, um, in this scale and with blue color indicating low quality and the yellow color indicating high quality. Uh, we could see some studies might suffer from uh, bias how, in terms of how they measure the outcome and uh, the exposure and uh, how the representative of the uh, cohort. Um, 
Yes. Hey, Jed, could you talk a little bit more about the uh, kind of risk of bias assessment, if I'm understanding the Ottawa scale right? So how exactly did you end up doing that? I'm not so familiar with this method. So I think it was originally designed for random control trial, and it's adapted for cohort studies um, using the seven criteria. So some of the terms might sound a little strange, like how uh, compared comparability of the cohorts. Um, but we uh, we try to to set um, different outcomes to adapt into cohort studies. Maybe I could find the. So you're kind of rating each individual study according to some questions, and then they sum up to be low versus high, I guess, risk of bias or, or quality. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thanks, yeah. So, um, so in general, uh, from this review, uh, I think there's evidence demonstrating there were positive association between parental BMI and that of the uh, adult offspring. Even we use different kind of uh, effect measurement and uh, portraits. And there's no strong evidence indicating there's sex specific uh, parental offspring association. Um, but we acknowledge there's heter heterogeneity among the studies. Uh, for example, the they use different study design and uh, the, part, the participants' characteristics also different. Uh, besides that, several pro problems might also mention, uh, for example, the parental offspring and of, the parental and offspring BMI were married at a different life stage. Uh, for the offspring, they might be married at uh, the early 20s, 30s, or during the middle adulthood or even late adulthood. And uh, in some studies, BMI was self-reported, uh, so they might be subject to uh, reporting bias. And uh, there are also different approaches for confounders, like uh, for gestational age and the birth weight. We think it's on the pathway between parental BMI and uh, offspring BMI, therefore it shouldn't be adjusted. But some studies, they adjusted the mediators. And uh, no opportunity is also an issue. Uh, it might attenuate the association in intergenerational study. But uh, to sum up, uh, in this study, we found there's intergenerational transmission with BMI and uh, the association would be lasting into adulthood. But there's no evidence to suggest a difference between maternal and paternal line. Uh, so what's next? So far, I talked about two generations uh, and we found the association between the parents and the offspring. Um, but there's new evidence suggesting the obesity effect might last into the third generation. So not only influence there, own children, but also the grandchildren. And of course, environmental factors might play a role in this uh, pathway, like uh, the social economic position and uh, even the diet. So our study is to, to move the two generation beyond, uh, to move beyond the two generation studies uh, by using the involved longitudinal birth cohort studies. Uh, we designed two uh, new studies. The first one is to look at the influence of a grandparental social economic position on the associations between parental BMI and the offspring BMI trajectories. Uh, so we have the offspring BMI from age one to age 18, and we created the BMI trajectories uh, using multi-level effect models. And uh, the study has already registered at OSF, and you could find the detailed information there. 
And the second study is a mitigation study, uh, which to assess that parental BMI is a mediator between those of the association between grandparent and grandchild BMI. And I would like to acknowledge all the co-authors. Uh, thanks for their support and help and the patience for this study. Yeah, and uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Jay. It's very good presentation. And uh, I think you got us very well through all the results. And there's actually quite a few that you had to take us through. So I think that was very well done. And I think it's, I find it very interesting that, so you laid out in the beginning that maybe there is sort of like, there is this hypothesis of this intrauterine effect, right? And, and I guess the conclusion of your, based on kind of your review of the evidence is that maybe it's, it's not really clear and it's actually surprisingly like, uh, consistent between the maternal and the paternal line like I, I, I would I'm really kind of uh, yeah surprised by this I, I think that's uh, yeah that's sort of like amazing that they are so much similar I would not have expected that at all so I think that's uh, yeah that's that's really interesting and you one thing that I thought about and 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 people can just come in with their questions I'll just start off with one that one thing that I wondered about and you, you touched upon it in sort of like your discussion yeah, it's it's the different age groups, the different life stage that 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 people are in, um, and I was just wondering if you there's probably a reason why you didn't look more into it, right? So maybe I'm just curious why you didn't or what was not able to kind of look into it. Could you stratify on what's the age of the children or or the parents or something like that, right? So so kind of look into does that matter? Like is the correlation the same or or not? Um, actually, we look at that in the subgroup analysis, analysis and uh, there's just no apparent patterns to, to suggest there's difference. Uh, so we, uh, first of all, not all studies provide the offspring BMI measured time, but we tried our best to categorize them into early, middle, and late adulthood. Um, it's not a, a very accurate uh, but then we we uh, look at a different effect size at a different stage of the offspring. Um, it just uh, no evidence to show like uh, later is always higher than than younger, and it, the evidence just uh, mixed. Okay, yeah, because I I remember actually yeah from a presentation so yesterday that there was this uh, kind of the. I think it was something similar, but that was just from a similar study, or from a from a different from one study, right? Where they sort of tried to look at where the children's kind of uh, op kind of where you, how early can you kind of detect obesity in children? Like at what age do they sort of like start to diverge, right? So they looked at children that were obese at what, like later in life and and not, and then it kind of tracked the way back to see where they could see it, it, it changed. And it, it was, I guess, quite early that they could actually go back. So like, I, I think maybe beginning at the school age or something like that, uh, maybe even a little bit before that. Um, so, so maybe there was, there could be something, but yeah, you're only as lucky as the data that kind of you have, right? Or the, what people have reported from the meta analysis. So maybe, yeah, maybe all of them were not kind of, you know, you were not able to see that. Okay, but that was interesting. I think maybe we have a question here. Um, I think from Omar, he, he can't turn off his camera or his uh, microphone. So he's, uh, yeah, so he's writing in the, in the chat and he says, uh, very interesting and comprehensive results, Jay. Uh, yeah, he cannot turn on the microphone or camera, uh, but here's the question. Do you have any idea on how big is the non-paternity problem? Like how many, percent are missing or, or something like that what's your what's your um, thoughts about that i think some studies they mentioned this uh, in their in the article and uh, the rate might be between five to ten if i remember correct uh, but some studies they just didn't talk about it at all 
So it may the, it also makes us difficult to assess the quality. And I think the next question he said. Yeah, that sounds like said, something that is more within Omar's own uh, own research interests as well. But uh, yeah, so like the correlation between uh, or mean differences between the parents. Between the parents. Um, no, but I you didn't look at it because it wasn't your research question, right? But it's just maybe. Okay, no. Um, so anyone else have any, any questions that they'd like to ask? I can join in with one. Um, could you talk more about um, what motivated you to extend the study design for the new ALSPAC study um, to uh, the next generation? So I think there's certain famine studies from the past. Um, and what are maybe some complications that you can anticipate with this study? Uh, so actually, my original PhD study is the three generation <laughs> cohort study. Um, but we would like to start from the review to build a foundation for the next step. Um, and I think what motivates me is just to, uh, I remember the, when I read the articles about the, the family uh, cohort and how the grandparent influenced the grandchildren uh, if they were uh, suffered to, uh, to lower nutrition. So I think it's quite uh, fascinating and uh, uh, it's just a lot of questions because some study found that the association between the grandfather and the granddaughter. Uh, so it's definitely something going on with the epigenetic factors. Uh, so that's the motivation at the very beginning, I guess. Yeah, thanks. Uh, another thing that I found interesting in doing research on a different topic is um, looking at parental diabetes and then offspring birth weight, like you had mentioned, um, and then offspring's uh, BMI uh, and also diabetes risk later in life. And um, I just thought that it was interesting because with diabetes, um, in parents and then the offspring's birth weight, there is in some cohort studies found to be a sex specific effect in that, for example, um, a father would um, with diabetes um, around the offspring's birth would have a lower birth weight kid more likely, whereas a mother would have maybe a higher birth weight kid. And so like Daniel was mentioning and like you had mentioned with the theoretical model. This could have to do with maybe intrauterine effects um, with the mother, um, but it's so complicated with genetics and different factors like that. Yeah, I think it's like the uh, theoretical framework when it becomes three generations, it quickly becomes very complex and uh, very difficult to distangle the factors. Thanks. Yeah, and I was just, well, when we are talking about this intrauterine effect, right, there's a lot of studies about that. But do you think that your study, your results sort of, yeah, question that theory or what do you think? I know it's kind of putting it on the, kind of on the, on, on the spot here or whatever you, you say, right? But it's sort of like just thinking, yeah, because that was sort of like the idea, right, that there will be some difference. But you didn't find anything, not even that this post pre and post uh, like a uh, uh, pregnancy BMI or anything like that. So it's sort of like seems very consistent with the mother and the father as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And since this is just a, a systematic review and to summarize the studies existing in this area, so, um, so we could not say there's causal and no causal effect at all, uh, but uh, the evidence is quite consistent. And um, I guess in the future, 
the for studies who would like to test the hypothesis, maybe they need to have better study design to to answer the question. Yeah, at least I think it's uh, yeah, it it at least it's it starts a debate, I guess. Uh, the results here, so um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see when you get it published, right? So, um, what what the reaction will be? Um, okay, there's another question from from Omar. Uh, it's like when does uh, this? So in the next studies, so when does uh, social economic status slash income when is this is going to be measured, and how are you going to sort of uh, define it? Um. So the social economic position is the grandparents' um, social economic. So they were married when they became pregnant. I think when they first enrolled into the cohort. Um, yeah, and it's how to define it is also another question, uh, like education or the uh, occupational status could also be indexed for the social economic position. Um, but uh, we decided to use education as an index for the social economic position because it's, it's not perfect, but it's uh, easier to compare with other studies. Okay, thank you. Just see if, uh, if there's a question here. Yeah, so Christina have a, or Christina, um, just, I think that's, a, that's just a comment, right? Yeah, so I think these studies can answer nature versus nurture, but they certainly implicate fathers in transmission of BMI. They're really elegant. Uh, they are really elegant uh, adoption studies that are Better able to pass out genetic inheritance from social inheritance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just just a comment on on that. And then uh, today she has a question. Uh, um, thanks very much for the interesting presentation. I have a question regarding the influence of various environmental factors such as food environment, regional deprivation, and so on. Do you think the studies sufficiently adjusted for these factors, and is it even possible? As I recall, uh, most of the studies didn't mention the food environment. They may have the parental diet information, but not regional deprivation, things like that. So there, there will be residual compounding for these studies. But you think that will be the same for the mother and father if it's assessed at the same time? Maybe not the like the trajectories like of, of different things, right? But for the mother and fathers, if it's assessed at the same time and they're in the same environment and maybe even living together and all that, maybe that's uh, it will be very similar at least. Like when comparing yeah. those results, not the individual ones, but just saying that what's going on in the environment that will be somewhat similar between the two. Yeah. Thank you, all right. Okay, are there any more, more questions here? Any burning last questions? No, okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Jay, for, uh, for an excellent presentation. And uh, yeah, I think I've I've seen a version of it before, but uh, I think uh, this uh, yeah this was very very nice and gave a really really good overview. Thank you, and thank you again for the invitation. Yes, of course.